Hello all and welcome to Well Crochet Designs. My name is Mary and in today's tutorial we are working on, get excited, ta-da! <laughs> Our pretty as a peacock blanket. Guys, we have been waiting a very long time for this gorgeous piece and you know what, I, you know, it's my fault. <laughs> <laughs> I've been completely inundated. We will be having a quick video vlog tomorrow regarding that. So let's not worry about that for now. Let's get on with this. And let's firstly say a lovely thank you to the winner of this. Now, this was actually a giveaway. Um, oh, I don't know. Mid-year last year. <laughs> I can't remember. It was a long time ago. Um, it was a giveaway last year. And the idea was you had to choose a name for the project, the yarn, that we were going to use, the colour combination, um, and you were supposed to do all that and have it all in by one week, which everyone did and they answered it beautifully. <laughs> uh, but the winner of our project, this one right here, and she knows who she is and everybody else does too now. So if you're joining us new, you're about to find out. <laughs> Welcome, by the way. Um, the winner of this particular giveaway was the lovely Jody Mann. And the yarn that Jody chose was, and still is, <laughs> Cascade Yarns Ultra Pima Cotton. Now, uh, just heads up, guys. I think the, um, if you're from Australia, if you're from overseas, you're lucky. I think the deep periwinkle was hard to find for me here in Australia. And I believe they were no longer making that particular color but you can still get it overseas now that's neither here nor there let's just talk to you i want to rush now because i know this tutorial goes a long time and the color combinations that jody chose were as this goes oh this is not in any kind of order it's just the order that she chose them in first one was jade it is um a gorgeous i don't know what you want to call it aqua green aqua blue i really don't know the deep periwinkle was the purple i love this color how gorgeous is it yeah uh, major teal is this one right here unusual color major teal i would have just called it blue but there you go major teal doesn't matter yeah and i'll tell you how many we, we've purchased as well and the jasmine green was this color right here gorgeous and of course buttercup the yellow oh. <laughs> now i don't want to get into too much but the uh the jade i purchased two of them no Yes, purchased two. Uh, the deep periwinkle, I purchased two. The teal, major teal, two. Jasmine green, two. And the uh, buttercup, just one. You probably won't need all these. You'll need all the colours, but you probably won't need the amount. See, the way it works is I noticed that I'd be chopping a lot of the amounts up. So I'll be using one and a half skeins of one and one and three quarter skeins of the other and just one of the other. So that's the reason why we had the extra. So you will end up with a little bit extra yarn in your stash, which is always good. <laughs> it's always good. All right. I'm not going to talk anymore because that'll take too long. And I know the tutorial goes a long time. So you will need your four millimeter hook because the yarn is an eight ply or a number three or a DK weight. Okay. You will need your scissors. Watch me rushing now. You will need a sewing, darning, and weaving needle. And you will need, obviously, for this tutorial, just one little stitch marker or a safety pin or a piece of thread just to help you out. All right. In this tutorial as well, way at the end of the tutorial, there's a small little video thing on how I wind up my yarn from a hank to a ball <laughs> to a skein. All right, or to a um, a cake, I should say, not a skein. So, hank, ball, cake. All right, that is happening way at the end of this tutorial. Now, I wanted to put it at the beginning, but I didn't want to waste everyone's time because you may have found your own way of winding up your yarn, and that's by all means your own way, and that's great. But just so that everybody knows what I do, I pop that right at the very end of this tutorial. And if you want to know where that is, I'll pop a time up there right now, or there, or there, or wherever. <laughs> you will see a time up there. That's the time you go to if you want to wind your skeins or hanks or balls up now. Okay, and that's it, guys. I'm not going to talk anymore. I'm going to let you head off on your own creating your gorgeous, pretty as a peacock blanket, 
part one. Good luck, guys. Alrighty, guys, we're going to start off by making a magic ring or a magic circle, magic loop. Just grabbing your tail end, holding it in front of you. Grab your working end, wrapping it around three fingers and go across your tail end. So you've formed a little X like so. All right. Grabbing your hook, passing it under the first thread, pulling your back thread up and towards you. You now have one, two and these two threads here are three. You just separate them all and then hold it with one hand until you get yourself organized <laughs> and then you change back to your organized hand. So we're here, we're going to chain one and two. Now this chain two for the next three rows will not act as anything. It's not a double crochet, it's not anything. Okay, well, let's just bring this up a little bit for you. Don't let go of your work. I did just to do this, but you don't need to. Okay, so now yarn over your hook. We're going to put a double crochet into our center. So pop your hook in, pull up a loop, still holding everything. Yeah, you should have three loops on your hook. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through the last two. Now let go for a moment. Grabbing yourself a stitch marker. Okay, Actually, I might use the smaller ones here. It just makes it a lot easier. And you are putting it in the stitch that you just made. Not the chain two, the stitch that we just completed, which is, and let me show you when I stretch it up there, it's like that, all right? Your chain two are down here and your double crochet is that, those two loops, all right? Now, before we continue, grab your tail, giving it a gentle tug, but leaving enough space to fit in 15 more double crochets. All right, so that's one. Two, and three. And I'm going to pop this on fast, and then you get to your 15th stitch. All right, four, and off we go. Fourteen and 15. All right, how did you go guys? You should have all together 16 now, all right, because of our first double crochet that we made. So let's count them. And what you are counting are these little V, Vs that you see right there. They look like the letter V, so you can actually see them, all right? So off we go and count, you should have 16. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Before we continue, let me bring that out a little bit so you can see. Grab your tail end. And this is where the magic happens, guys. Give your work a tug. And what it'll do is it'll make that center tight. This will open up a little bit as we work along. But once we get to our third row of this color, we're going to weave this end in. We don't want that to be in our way for the rest of our work. But it's okay for the next few rows just in case you realize you've made a mistake, okay, and you want to go back and fix it. So let's get started with our very next row. Yay! <laughs> pop your hook in. Let me get a close up. Okay, so popping your hook in the stitch with your stitch marker in it. Pull your loop through. Pull it through to the loop on your hook, and you have closed up your work. And that chain two will kind of close everything in, and you won't see it. Okay, it's only there to close up a gap. So you're taking out your stitch marker. You'll notice that at the end, all right? And in the same stitch, you're going to chain one and two. All right, so now we're gonna pop two double crochets in that stitch and in every other stitch in this round. So it's a very easy round. But before we do, let's just put one in there for now. So one double crochet in the same space that you are in grabbing your stitch marker and popping it in that stitch right there. It gets the two loops on top, okay? So you pop that in there. And then you pop another double crochet in the same space. And then it's two in every stitch all the way around. One and two. Two into your next. One and two. All right, so if you had 16 double crochets in the round before, which you should have, then when you finish this row, you should have 
32 double crochets plus your chain two at the beginning that doesn't act as anything all right so i'm going to pop this on fast for you and you can continue to do your two double crochets and i'll meet you at the end and off we go Alrighty, and now I've got our last two double crochets right in there. And there you go. Now add up your double crochets and you should have 32 double crochets in the round. Remember you are counting these chains up the top. They're like little chain loops. Now, just a quick tip. Yours truly has done this on mine before and I probably shouldn't have done it because it's tricky. You can count your two double crochets this way as two four six eight and it's okay to do that but if you accidentally added a chain in between these double crochets here let's say for argument's sake you will think okay i've got 32 double crochets in the round but in your next row when i say pop one in this stitch and pop two in those stitches or whatever else have you you're going to have that extra chain stitch if you've made a mistake this is only if you've made a mistake um, so it's just a quick tip to let you know that sometimes you know counting like that which I am a big culprit of doing and I've done it many times <laughs> online heads up guys don't do it literally count your little chains especially if you are new to crochet count these little v's all right I hope that's just a quick tip there I do like to put the odd tip in my tutorials occasionally and that's one of them all right so now that we've got our 32 stitches and I'm assuming you've counted slip stitch into the top of the stitch with your stitch marker into it and just pull that loop through taking out your stitch marker like that all right so there you go now you have your second row now we're going to do our third row again chaining one and two doesn't count as anything popping a double crochet in that stitch right there So now it's yarn over your hook, second double crochet in that stitch right there. All right, now in this round, we're doing two, one, two, one, two, one, two, all the way around. So we're still increasing. So in our very next stitch, we are putting one double crochet only. In the next stitch, we're putting two double crochets. One and two. In your next stitch, you are putting one. So it's very basic. It's one, two, one, two, one, two, or two, one, two, one, two, <laughs> whichever suits you, all the way around your piece. And off you go. I'll pop this on fast again, and I'll catch you at the end of the row. All right, guys, you should have one, two, one, two, one, two, all the way around. And your last stitch, let's get a close up for you, should be one double crochet. All right. So if it hasn't added up to just the one double crochet, then you've gone wrong in your count. So pop your double crochet in like so. Just pull up a loop and count your stitches 
in your round. You should have 48 stitches in the round, all right? So if you haven't, uh, just check where you may have gone wrong and you're not including those two chains. So just be weary, mm, get, one, get that out of the way. You're not including those two chains, so don't count them. You're starting your count from your very first stitch marker and working all the way until you get to that very last loop, two loops you see there, all right? So now this is the fun bit. Not only are we changing uh, pattern, but we're also changing colors. So what I want you to do is slip stitch into your blue, pull a loop through, pull it through to the loop on your hook, take out your stitch marker, chain one and pull up your loop and cut your work. All right, so give it a cut anywhere make sure your tail is long enough for you to weave in if you leave a small tail it's going to be hard for you to weave in all right so that's the start of your pretty as a peacock blanket what is your next color i hear you ask it is yellow <laughs> i couldn't find it i fell off the top of the the table there all right so we are using yellow now i'm going to wind mine up properly later but because we're only doing one row um I'm just going to use what I've got here. Now I use a, a yarn winder and they wind up like that. And I've used this yarn before. As you, my regulars would already know that I've used this yarn to create this piece before, just that first part. For the newbies joining us, firstly, welcome. Secondly, we are starting our Pretty as a Peacock blanket and we are using all the colours that were chosen by the lovely Jody, one of our subscribers here, who won the giveaway for this particular blanket. And that is something that can happen very often, guys. We do giveaways all the time. Um, when you least expect it, we'll just wake up one morning and say, right, we're making a blanket, let's do a giveaway. And that's what happens. Alrighty, let's get on with our next colour. All right. Now, oh, that's too close. I'm sorry, guys. Um, for those of you who are joining us new, you wouldn't know this, but I don't usually like to start uh, in an area where our tail had finished. So I'm just going to count back six, so maybe seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Let's go into the seventh one just for fun. Okay. So grabbing your uh, new colour, popping it over your hook and just pulling it through like so. Okay, passing your thread forward and you are chaining one. Give that chain a tug so it's nice and taut and in that same stitch we're popping a single crochet. Pop your hook in, pull up a loop, two loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through two. Now we are chaining three, one, two and three. Let's just pop our tail into the back now, that's the back of our work. Yeah. This is going to be a repeat stitch in the round, just like before. Okay, so we've chained three, and this is where count comes in. It's really important in this row. You're counting one, two, and into your third stitch, you are putting a single crochet, like that. Okay, one, two, three, skip one, two, and into your third stitch. Now, that is the stitch with your knot in it. Just pass that knot at the back and do your single crochet, which we will weave that end in later. Yeah. Chain one, two, three, skip one, two, and into your third stitch with a single crochet. It's a very simple row. And off we go. One, two, three, skip one, two, and a single in your third. Chain one, two, three, Skip one, two, single in your third, and I'm going to pop this on fast in a moment so that you can actually continue your row. And I'll meet you at the end of the row. Chain one, two, three, skip one, two, and single crochet into your third, and off we go. Skip one, two, jump into your third. Now you have two stitches left, which is normal. You're going one, two, three, 
skip one two and normally you would put a single crochet in there you're not going to do that because there's already one in there and I should have put a stitch marker I'm very naughty pop your hook in that stitch you like that I said that all in one sentence <laughs> pull a loop through like so and pull it through to the loop on your hook guess what pull up a loop you're going to change color yet again and you're thinking oh so many color changes yes beauty is pain <laughs> trust me you want something gorgeous like this blanket you need to make it gorgeous <laughs> okay so the chain spaces is what we need for this round so you've got one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen and sixteen all right it's exactly the same amount of spaces that you have in your very first round of double crochets if you've got anything different then check to see where you may have gone wrong in the meantime let's get on with one two three four five and round number five we are changing our color to the green the gorgeous bright green so let's grab our green all right now um We've got a pattern change yet again okay so what we want to do here is and it's it's not just a pattern change it's an interesting look it gives it like a thicker look uh, making your blanket more warm and cuddly for your young one all right once again i'm not going to start in the same space where i ended off but i will go three spaces back one two three this is not for anything there's no specific number i just you know like to do this all right so here it's a little bit tricky you've got your space right there we're not working in these stitches we're working in the two stitches from your previous round of this one so pop your hook in that first blue yeah grab your green whoops if i can get it off my hand <laughs> grab your green pull in your loop through now just being weary that you are working over your yellow into your blue but over your yellow so grab your green passing it forward we're going to lock that into place now you don't have to do this tight okay so it's chain one two and three grabbing your stitch marker and popping it in the top oh, if i can show you the top two loops of that last double crochet that you did last chain that you did sorry <laughs> all right so in the next stitch grabbing your tail and just popping it at the back now or you can probably work over it at the back but i would leave it at the back we'll just weave that in later yarn over your hook you're going to pop a double crochet but in the second blue and you are crocheting right around everything so you're crocheting over your yellow keeping your stitches nice and tall Pull through two and pull through two all right now we are going to chain two one and two we're going to jump into the next space double crochet in your first double crochet in your second guess what that's it it looks complicated but it isn't okay so you double crochet one and you double crochet two in your blue stitch and around your yellow all right yes chain one and two and off you go that's it that is your pattern i'm just going to drop that yellow thread we will we'll work on that later that is your pattern all the way through this row chain one and two just pop that yellow way at the back we're not going to work over it we're just going to put it at the back for now because we're going to weave that in separately because a pattern like this your ends need to be weaved in uh differently okay because you can't crochet over them okay there we go now i want to do the rest but look at that <laughs> well you know what forget it what we're going to do guys continue <laughs> i'm going to just head off on your own for this part it's going to take me ages to take that knot undone but there you go so it's double crochet two one in each of the blue chain two two chain two two chain two two chain two all the way get to your last space there and i'll meet you up there in a moment Alrighty guys, I'm at the end of my row. I've chained my last second last two. I'm going to put my last two double crochets in the two double crochets below. And then we're going to chain one and two and we're going to slip stitch right into that stitch marker again. This is what we're doing all the way through our work. We're slip stitching into the stitch with our stitch marker in this tutorial. Okay 
won't always happen but in this one we, it will you are pulling up a loop yes beauty is pain again guys <laughs> cut your thread no they're saying no but trust me it will give a gorgeous look i promise i promise oh i think i promise <laughs> you like that <laughs> so let's get on with pattern change a little bit and a new color of course you already knew that anyway so your new color is ta-da the jade green or jade blue whichever you want to call it <laughs> it's got a blue and a green and you can't go wrong so one two three once again three spaces before now the pattern change is a little bit different and you're also using half double crochets in this round all right so you're still popping your hook in the row two rows before okay so pop your hook in there grabbing your tail mm. okay now pop in the loop right through and you are going to just drop that little gray at the back green whatever you want to call it chain one and two pop your stitch marker in here now this chain two will act as a half double crochet in this round all right we're going to pop in the same space half double so yarn over your hook pop it in that same stitch pull up a loop three loops on your hook yarn over pull through all three loops at the same time and now you're chaining three one two three again skipping over all of that and in your single crochet in that row below you are putting two half double crochets yarn over your hook in the first one yarn over pull through all three loops that's your first one yarn over into the stitch again pull up a loop three loops and there you go so one two three that's your pattern two half doubles three chains two half doubles three chains all the way through so let's we want to be careful now because it's hard to catch these stitches <laughs> don't crochet over any of your ends we're going to weave them in because it can get a little confusing with a lot of ends so just do your two half doubles like so chain or one two three and into your very next one with your two half doubles one and two whoops don't split the yarn like I just did hello and then chain one two three and two half doubles all right it's super duper easy so what I want for you to do is to continue in that manner do those stitches all the way in the round get to your very last space right there and I shall meet you up here in a moment alrighty guys I've done my chain three there and I'm going to put my last two half double crochets in the space before our stitch marker so that's one and two then I'm going to chain three one two three and we are slip stitching into the top of that chain like so pull a loop through take out your stitch marker you're gonna hate me <laughs> chain one I'll <laughs> pull up a loop cutting our work we're going to change back to our normal blue we are going to kind of repeat this row but we're using double crochets instead all right so once again one two three you don't have to do this you can start in the same spot you can start over here it doesn't matter but I'm going to start right there and we're going to start in our half double crochets in the previous row below this one so popping your hook in grabbing your blue you can start it any way you want just put your loop through you can pull your loop forward if you want I just don't want to to be honest with you I'm going to leave it at the back and we're going to be chaining three chain one two and three popping your stitch marker in that third chain top chain that you just did it's really tight there so I'm going to struggle at the end of the row <laughs> You don't have to worry about that and you're going to double crochet into your very next half double crochet so a normal double crochet easy yeah guess what chain three that's it one two three two double crochets one into each of your lower stitch your half doubles in the previous round or your doubles or whatever they were I can't remember now <laughs> one two three I think they were doubles down there <laughs> <laughs> oh, the half doubles are up the top okay so into your next oh, oh, if you can get them in you can do it 
there's the next one one two you're loving it very quick and easy one two three and uh yes jumping over all of that and your two double crochets right there and two and i'm not going i'm going so fast because i think you know what you're doing you do it's very simple okay if you don't let's explain it nice and easy chaining three two double crochets one in each of your green stitches chain three one one chain three one one chain three all the way around get to your very last space and i'll meet you there in a moment Alrighty, guys here we are at the end of the row i have two double crochets there chaining one two and three and we are jumping over our last set and slip stitching right into that mm, i said it was tight didn't i <laughs> tight stitch <laughs> slip stitch into the stitch with your stitch marker in now you're going to find these stitches are a little odd because we've got a whole lot of loose tails at the back which we're going to um, weave in soon if you haven't already done so but slip stitch through like that in this same stitch you're going to chain one only for now just give it a tug a gentle tug and then you're going to put a half double in the same stitch so yarn over your hook into the stitch tight stitch <laughs> pull loop through three loops on your hook yarn over pull through all three loops grab your stitch marker like that all right pattern's going to change slightly here all right so you've got a half double in that first chain there you're going to put a half double in your very next double crochet so pop your half double in pop your hook in pull a loop through three loops yarn over pull through all three loops from here we're going to be putting our two double crochets in these half doubles and half doubles in your double so it's a little confusing but we'll go for it so yarn over your hook popping your one double crochet in that one right there oh one double crochet two two another double crochet into your next stitch two two and in these two doubles you're putting a half double so yarn over your hook into your first one into your second one like so so what we're going to do now is put two double crochets in these stitches so one in the first and you're going into the half doubles from the previous row one and one into your second and doing double crochets all right i'll slow that down because i'm not sure if you understood it in these double crochets you're going to put half double crochets so one into your first stitch one and one into the second two and your doubles are going into your previous row so double into the first double into the second two half doubles one into the first and one into your second all right what you should be having is a closing up look all right now again two doubles one into your first and one into your second and then your two half doubles one and two all right i'm sure you're getting the picture you're actually all you have to remember is two half doubles two doubles two half doubles two doubles and where you're putting your doubles in your previous row and your half doubles in your top doubles half doubles doubles half doubles all right continue that row get to your last two half doubles complete them and wait for me there all righty guys i asked you to get to the end of the row do your last two half doubles there and in our next two stitches we are doing our last two double crochets one and two like so then we are joining with a slip stitch to the same stitch that we usually do at the end of the row now the best part is we're still not cutting cutting our thread with this round okay take out your stitch marker chain one and in that same space you are going to put one half double crochet so pop your 
half double crochet in there like so okay now the pattern's going to change a little bit so pop in your stitch marker you don't want to get confused in the same stitch you are putting another half double crochet okay in the next three stitches you are putting one half double crochet each so one in your first one in your second one in your third all right in your fourth stitch you are doing two half doubles one and two and then you're doing three again one two three and then you are putting two into your fourth and that's pretty much the pattern guys it's very basic this row only if you messed up your count in your previous round this isn't going to add up okay so make sure your count is correct you've got one two and three whoops let's try that again <laughs> three and then two into your fourth a very simple basic row all right so three half double crochets in a row two into your fourth one two three two one two three two one two three two all the way around when you get to your last one two three they will be the last three half doubles and i will meet you there in a moment Alrighty, guys if you played your cards right you should have two half doubles in your fourth last stitch and then you should have three stitches left where you need to put a half double in each one one two and three now we're going to slip stitch in a minute I'm going to take my stitch marker up because I've split my stitch now before we slip stitch we're going to change color but we're not going to cut this thread and I'll explain why we might be able to just tiny find a way to tiny slip stitch it up tiny slip stitch it up well I'll show you what I mean all right so you need to slip stitch into the stitch with your stitch marker but not with the blue okay drop the blue for a minute grab your new color which is the purple grab your purple pulling it through there your stitch and pulling it through to the loop you are in now what you're going to do is grab your blue all right just passing your blue up towards you holding on to the tail of your purple at the back all right so what we're going to do is chain one with the purple bring that blue back and over the chain and in the same space you are putting your single crochet with the the purple all right whoops like that all right so it's going to be a tiny little bit noticeable here that you did that with the blue but not much in hindsight when you finish your blanket it's a tiny tiny speck and you won't see it but then you'll be able to work with your blue when you get to the next row and it'll only be for this one round for now I don't think we'll be doing this again all right so holding everything at the back using your purple you've done one single crochet you are chaining one and two you are skipping one and you are doing a single crochet into your next one like that again chain one and two skip one single in your next chain one and two skip single in your next super duper easy yeah one two skip single in the next all right I don't think I need to show you anymore one two skip single in your next I think you can do this row with flying colors get it flying colors ah <laughs> I made it funny all right so single crochet chain two skip one single in your next chain two skip one single in your next and if you did your additions right here you should end up right here your last single crochet should be in your second last stitch and you'll have one remaining all right so go ahead get to your second last single crochet or your third last single crochet and I shall meet you there in a moment alrighty guys here we are at the end of the row I have one stitch remaining I've done my last single crochet now I'm chaining one and two not forgetting that 
um, or you'll be one space short. I'm going to slip stitch into the purple with the purple. Now we should have put a stitch marker there. Once again, I forgot. Pull a loop through and pull it through to the loop that you are in. Then you're going to jump into that space there. All right, let's pull the blue down or anything. Once you jump into that space, drop your purple, grab your blue. That's a little bit awkward with all these ends at the back. Pull your blue through and pull it through to the loop on your hook and then chain one, two and three. Popping your stitch marker in like so. The top chain, I remembered this time. <laughs> <laughs> remembered here all right in the same stitch you are putting a double crochet not the stitch sorry the same space you are putting a double crochet like so all right but before you continue turn it around and cut your purple because you won't be needing that anymore for a little while so give it a cut it just helps with all the ends everywhere and we're going to have to weave in those ends soon i know i keep saying it but we will very shortly very very shortly <laughs> very shortly she says what when <laughs> around christmas <laughs> oh sorry guys from here <laughs> i'm so naughty from here we are going to chain one jump straight into the next space with two double crochets now this time we're not going in stitches on the bottom row we're just going into these spaces now chain one two into the next space all right easy <laughs> a very easy row yet again chain one into the next space one and two and i'll leave it there because i think you know what you're doing oh i'm so close to the camera sorry guys get to this last space right here and i will meet you up there and get ready for some change all right get to that last space and i'll meet you up there in a moment all righty guys i'm at the end of the row i've chained my one and I'm going to put my two double crochets in that space there. One and two. That's our last space. Then we chain one and we slip stitch into the top of this stitch marker. Pull a loop through. Sorry, guys. Pull up a loop. We're changing color. <laughs> what? They're saying no more color change. No, you have to. You have to. <laughs> It's got to look like a peacock, trust me. Now we're going to go back into the yellow. Um, we're going to change the pattern slightly over the next two rows. We're going to start rounding it off so that we can now turn our little circle into a square. All right. So once again, your stroller doesn't like starting where there's a tail. It doesn't matter now. Just, you know, you can see less tails around here. Once again, I'm going to go back over three. So it's one, two and three just for fun. And what we'll do is we'll pop it in, not so much in a space, we'll start it on one of the double crochets, all right? So grabbing your yellow and pulling it through. Passing your tail forward, you'll lock it into place with a chain one, like so. Let's get a close up here. And we're going to pop a single crochet in the same space, like so. And then... Just pop your, if I can pick it up, your stitch marker, <laughs> like so, in your stitch. You'll be slip stitching into that at the end of the row. Pop that little tail at the back. And you're single crocheting into your next stitch. And here, whoa, you're going to do a double crochet right into your purple. I'm not even in frame. There we go. <laughs> double crochet right into your purple like that single into your very next double and your next double so two singles and then your double right into your purple single crochet so that's the look we're going for here it's a lot taller than our very first one so off we go doing two singles one and two and a tall double right down into your purple stitch so it's pretty much you know what you're doing here you've done all this before but let's get into the stitch here where there's a stitch marker where there's a stitch slip stitch hello <laughs> single one single two just grab your blue pop it at the back and just do a double right down into your purple bringing it up like that pulling it through 
and then a single into each one into your chain stitches the top of your chain stitch there if you've done the same as me and one into your next stitch so really it's the same all the way through you can't go wrong tall double two singles tall double two singles super duper easy how's that Hey, gorgeous. I am loving this look. All right. Tour doubles, two singles all the way around. Get to your last two singles here and wait for me there. All righty, guys. Here we are at the end of our row. Now I've done my last double crochet in that lower uh, row. And now I'm going to do the last two single crochets right here. But there's actually a space here that we need to do our very, very last double crochet in. So pop your double crochet in there. Don't forget that one. It's easy to forget. Yeah. And then you're just slip stitching in there. You're going to hate me, guys. We're going to be casting off. <laughs> oh, do you hate me? <laughs> All right. So chaining one, casting off. We have a gazillion ends. We're almost ready. I keep saying it. We're almost ready to weave those in. Not yet. And I'll tell you why. Because this, this can be tricky when you are doing... Um, your count all right so if you mess up your count and you haven't left a long enough tail and you want to go back and fix it and you've already weaved in all your ends and the way we weave our ends in is going to be really difficult to get undone but once we get to the section where we're going to start our squared area that's when we will start weaving in all these ends because you can't change it after that you're not allowed to <laughs> you like that you're not allowed to change it so let's get on with the next color which is the green the normal green the light green if you will again i'm going to go three over or i can actually just go well i'll go three over because there's a whole lot of ends there so we're in that space so it's one two and three and i'll start from it doesn't matter anywhere will be fine start from a double crocheted row grabbing your little oh, it doesn't matter you can start from anything because this row is a one stitch repeat oh you like that too easy all right so what are we going to do in this row we are going to chain one and do a single crochet in the same stitch like so oh i didn't tighten that up enough there we go <laughs> grabbing your stitch marker and popping it in right there All right, now we can actually crochet over this tail if we wanted to because every stitch is going to be the same and it's going to be a single crochet. So pop your hook in your very next stitch like that with a single crochet. One into your next single crochet. Even though you're crocheting over this tail, you're going to weave it in as well. One into your next single crochet and your next. I'm going to drop my green now. Oh, no, one more. That should do it. Yeah, about four or five stitches. And then we're going to weave in and out of there as well afterwards. I'm very pedantic when it comes to ends. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I had to disappoint. But this is an easy row. Too easy, too, too easy. You are single crocheting all the way across your row. Gone into the double. Yes. Now you want to go into that single crochet. Now, if you want, you can actually crochet over your yellow if you like and I would advise to do it you don't have to too easy this row again you are going to single crochet in every stitch all the way across I don't need to let you sit here and watch me doing that so I think that you can do this head off on your own do your single crochets and I will meet you back here in a moment Alrighty guys, here we are at the end of the row. I have one single crochet left. Let's finish that off. And then let's just slip stitch into this stitch marker stitch. Take that, oops, out. And just pull up a loop. <laughs> You're saying, no, don't do it. Yes, we're doing it. <laughs> or make sure your count is correct before cutting. All right. And you should have about um, 150 stitches lying lying 170 stitches <laughs> 170 stitches to be exact in your round all right so guess what you're going to do you're going to change to the um 
I don't know what you want to call it, teal. I don't even know what you want to call this color. Jade, dark jade or light jade, I don't know. Anyway, we're going to do the jade. Just have a look, see where there is some less ends. And I reckon we'll just go back, you know, six stitches. Yeah, we'll go back six stitches. All right, from where that little slip knot is. Yeah, bring that up like that. All right, so there we just go one, two, three, four, five, six. It doesn't matter. Really, it doesn't. But this row is a very interesting row. It is a closing up row. It is the row that's going to start us off on our corners. So we are going to start turning our circle into a square in this row. So pulling your loop through, chaining one, two, and three, passing your tail back there. All right, grabbing your stitch marker, popping it in your, um, your, your third stitch there. Yes. All right. Now, the very next stitch we are going to make is called a half treble. Now, a half treble is yarn over your hook. You're going to start as though you are starting a double crochet right in your next stitch. So pop your hook in the space, pull up a loop. You should have three loops on your hook. Here, you're going to yarn over your hook and pull it through the first loop only yes yarn over your hook pull it through two loops yarn over your hook pull it through the last two loops and that is your first half treble okay we're going to do one more okay yarn over your hook in the next stitch pull up a loop yarn over your hook pull through one yarn over your hook pull through two yarn over your hook pull through the last two and now we're going to do two of these half trebles in your very next stitch. So yarn over your hook in the stitch, pull a loop through, yarn over through one, yarn over through two, yarn over through the last two and do another one in the same stitch. One, two and two. Now you are going to chain one and two and you're going to do another two half trebles all in that same stitch so off we go in the same stitch with our half trebles there's your first one there's your second one all right now what i want you to do here is what you see me do from here till the next corner you're going to do two more times all right so from here you're going to do two half trebles one in the first and one in your next stitch so off you go with a half treble in your next first stitch sorry that you come to and a half treble in your next stitch so now we're at the area where our little knot is but our stitch that we're going to be working next is right there Ignore the knot completely, it's right in there. And we're going to put a double crochet in there, just your normal double. So yarn over your hook and a double right in that stitch there. One. And then you need to do a double for another four doubles in a row. So one, two, three, and four. So initially you should have five. So we had our first one there, one, two, three, four, five. All right. Now you are going to put five half doubles and you know how to do a half double. Pull it through all three loops. Easy. One, two, three, four, and five. And now you're going to do five singles. One, two, three, four five yes so it should look a little bit oblong a little bit out of shape that's normal yep five half doubles one two three four and five five doubles one two, three, four, five. 
All right, so that's what we have so far. Now you're going to do those half trebles that you did earlier. And you're going to do one in each of the next two stitches. So yarn over your hook in the stitch, pull a loop through three loops, yarn over through the first one, yarn over through the next two, yarn over through the last two. And do it again in the next stitch. Like so. And in your very next stitch, you're going to do a corner, which is two, two, two. So two half trebles. There's one. Two. Chain one and two and two half trebles. One. and two if you wanted to from here you could head off on your own and just continue from corner to corner but i'm not going to leave you out in the lurch like that we're going to do it together okay so we're going to do a half treble in the next two stitches and you know what they are because you've been doing them now one half in the next two and then double crochet in your next five one, two, three, four, and five. Half doubles in your next five. One, two, three, four, five single in your next five one two three four five half doubles in your next five one two three four and five now five doubles one two three four and five two half trebles one whoops no, that didn't work Let's try that again. <laughs> Half treble through the first one, through the two loops, and then through the last two loops. And one in your next one. First one, two loops, two loops. Now we're doing a corner. Half treble, one. Half treble, two in the same stitches. I'm sorry, in the same stitch. <laughs> Hello. Chain one and two, turning a little bit if you like. Half treble again in the same stitch. One and a second one, two. Half treble in the next stitch. Half in your next. And then we're going into our sets of five. Five double crochets, one, and look what I have there. <laughs> you guys sick of me yet? <laughs> oh, I don't know how that happens. Look, it's wound up and everything. It just knots up to everything. It really does. <laughs> so we've done one, <laughs> two, three. I think I'm tired. We've been crocheting a long time today. <laughs> Four. <laughs> oh, dear. Five. And then we are five half doubles. One, two, three, four, five. Five singles. One, two, three, 
four, five, five half doubles. One, two, three, whoops, well, let's try that third one again, three, four, five, five doubles, one, two, three, four, Oops, almost put it the same stitch then. Five, you don't want to do that. And we've got to play with this again. <laughs> don't you love cotton? All right, now we have done our five doubles and now we're going to do our half trebles. You need two of them. One in each stitch, one. And another one. And then you need two in the one stitch. You need two, chain two, and another two. So you need two in there, so it's one. And two. Chain two, one and two. Two more half trebles in the same space. All right, we're on our last section. So it kind of looks a little bubbled, guys, but don't stress that little edge that you see there, these edges, they will straighten up. Trust me, they will. Well, they're better. <laughs> you like that one? No, I don't know. <laughs> I'm so naughty. <laughs> so we're going to put a half treble in the next two stitches again. So there we go. There's your first one. And there's your uh, second one. Five double crochets. One, two, three, four, and five. Five half doubles. One, two, three, four, five, five singles, two, three, four, and five, five half doubles, one, two, three, four, five all right and from here you're supposed to put five double crochets in a row we've got one two three four now remember our first chain three we did that's going to act as a double crochet in this round so one double crochet in there oh one in your next oh one in your next one in your very next and you've done your four and now you're going to slip stitch into that fifth one assuming we've done a fifth one there when we really haven't it's just chains pull up a loop guys <laughs> do you hate me well you're going to because i want you to cut your work yet again <laughs> what <laughs> all right so right now your work is a little bit wonky a little bit bubbly that will sort itself out in this very next round all right so let's get on with the next row you need your main color which is the blue for the next row okay so let's grab the blue now once again you know me i don't like to start where i see a thread so you know what we're going to do we're going to start in the very first corner before that thread all right so popping your hook in your very first corner well before your um early join Grabbing your blue, is that too close? It sure is. <laughs> Grabbing your blue and pulling your blue through. Pass your tail forward because we're going to crochet a little bit over that tail. 
you are chaining one, two, and three. And it's going to be classified as a double crochet again. But your first stitch in this corner is going to be a half treble. So you know how to do those. We've done them again in the previous round. Pull a loop through, yarn over, pull through the first loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Chain one and two, another half treble in the same space. But your next stitch in the same space needs to be a double. And just do a normal double crochet, like so. So for the next seven stitches, we are putting double crochets. So double crochet in your first stitch, and that stitch is right there. Don't forget it or you'll be one stitch short. All right, so double crochet one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. I'm sorry, I meant nine, my apologies. Two more. Double crochets. So what you should have had there was double crochet one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then across this way, right across here, we are doing 15 half double crochets and off we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, and fifteen. All right, so you should have that look so far. Yes. Now we are going to do nine double crochets across. So one, two, three, four. You're up to that little knot there. Now you can either do it either way. I would actually crochet over the knot, just go straight into there. Five, you don't have to, but I find that a lot easier. I'm going to keep crocheting over the tail just for fun. Six, you don't have to, it's easy for you to do it another way. Seven, eight, whoops, and nine. And you should end up in your very last half treble there. All right, now in your corner here, you're going to put one double crochet, one half treble, chain one and two, turning your work a little bit, a half treble, and a double crochet. All right, and then you are going to repeat those stitches right there and there and there all right i'm not going to sit here and let you watch me do it all you need to do and here's a quick rundown you need to put nine double crochets across 15 half doubles nine double crochets in this corner you need one double crochet one half treble two chains one half treble one double crochet nine across 15 halves nine across one double half treble chain two one half treble one double crochet nine across 15 across nine across and then wait for me there all right so just repeat this once twice and three times all right and i will meet you back when you are done all righty guys if you played your cards right you would be on your last nine double crochets and your last double crochet would be the stitch before your corner.
all right you would have finished right there so what I want you to do here is slip stitch into your stitch marker stitch pull a loop through you're going to still use your blue uh, thread all right so now you are going to chain one and from here you're going to half double crochet into the same stitch there like so pop your stitch marker in that half double crochet and don't worry about it for now you're going to pop another half double crochet but right into the very next stitch like so all right now this is going to be your repeat starting from this corner to this corner all right so in the corner you are going to put one half double crochet one double crochet chain two one and two a double and a half double all right and now you're going to put eight half double crochets along here so don't forget your first one is right here one two three four five six seven eight and 21 single crochets across all right so off you go one two three i'm gonna pop this on fast and get your 21st four And 21 single crochets now eight half double crochets across one two three four five six seven and eight and in that corner you're popping a half double crochet a double chain two turning your work a little bit a double and a half double and then you are going to repeat that side right there 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 and there by the time you get to here you would have ended up with you've already got two half doubles here in these two stitches so you will get your 21 single crochets across and seven half doubles towards the end not nine because you already have your two half doubles in there all right so go ahead and repeat that here here and here you'll be finishing off with only seven half double crochets but before you do flip your work we're going to weave in these ends all right so what we're going to do let's grab one that's tricky so that way uh, let's see one of these ones right here so you can see how to do the tricky ones and then the other ones will be much easier <laughs> we hope now I've got a needle that's extremely pointy so bear with me if I start sucking and crying and carrying on because I pin myself <laughs> bear with me now the reason I got a pointy one is because cotton is sometimes hard to weave in so I would like to use the pointy one so just you know <laughs> wait for me to cry um, all right so this is an end that's the bottom end now I would actually just, which is an absolute no-no, split that tail end there. But just check the front, make sure you can't see your needle. Yeah. So I've split that thread there and split the next one and brought it up. And then, see that blue right there? We're going to go in that stitch and weave it inside the blue. But once again, being careful that you can't see the needle, because if you can see the needle, that yellow thread is going to be very obvious, especially since we're working with such bold colours, such gorgeously bold colours. Hello. <laughs> and so you're going to go back the other way, or you can continue going 
look it's entirely up to you I would go back the other way because you've got this thread here that you need to weave in over here right so I would go back the other way again entirely up to you your choice and there you go all right and that's that well, where else can we go let's go back down into this stitch I'm going to go right over here to this one right here why why not <laughs> why not can you see the needle no you can't which is an absolute bonus and there you go all right and just going back the other way yet again I think that's plenty yeah if you want to go more you can but I think that is plenty weaving that through and then you grab your scissors giving it a cut being careful not to cut your work all right now before you do all of this weaving in end business you have to make sure that your work is correct because when you're splitting it's going to be hard to take undone you literally have to cut your work to take it undone now before we go one more thing I wanted to show you this little tail here that's got a knot because it was beginning yarn yep this the corner the middle one sorry not the corner the middle one I want you to weave that in with me because I want you to make sure you weave it in properly because people say, well, I put it in a wash and it came undone. Well, yes, it will. Because it's not, this is not knotted, not knotted. <laughs> okay, so you need to weave it in again. So you're going through, our tail end is coming out of here. So you're going back in there like that. All right, just check the front again. Make sure you can't see the needle and you can't. And away you go in there like so. All right. And you're going around. Oh, that didn't even go through because it's you know, super thick now for me. No, can't see it. Beautiful. <laughs> What's worse is I've got to come back. <laughs> I've got to come back the other way in a minute. All right, so we're going into a little bit more and then we're going to come back the other way because this is the only way to stop this middle end coming undone in the wash. So you're going to go back, you've turned your work around, now you're going back in the same way you came, but in a different thread. So go into a different thread first, making sure you can't see the needle. Okay, there we go. A little bit more. Yes, I'm pedantic. I've told you many times before, guys. You're joining us new, sorry. <laughs> If you are new to crochet, th this pattern is going to really test your abilities, you know. Um, it's easy stitches, but it's a lot of work and a lot of counting involved. Okay, so let's pull that loop. I think we're done. It's so thick. There is no way that's coming undone. So I'm going to cut that there. All right. Like that. All right. So what I would like for you to do now is to weave in all these ends. Let's just give this a bit of a tug so that yarn thread is hidden we've in all these ends finish off this row okay exactly the same way we did this here and I will meet you back here uh, in a couple of days time to complete part two of your pretty as a peacock blanket oh and get excited guys so we've in all your ends finish off this row and meet me back here in a few days time thank you so much for watching don't forget to like subscribe and share and do all the wonderful things that you guys yeah well pretty much already do for me um, and all I want to say right now is it is looking so much like a peacock already ah very excited <laughs> ciao for now Alrighty guys, you probably can't see my face much, but that's okay, you don't need to see that. Don't you like that? Um, what we're going to do now is start wrapping our yarn. Now, just to let you know, these are two chairs. They're two chairs. And I've put them on an angle looking like or facing that. I don't know how high up that camera is. <laughs> I wish I'd face it to me now. Um, there's your little hank. All right, what you're going to do is open her up like so. And just let it drop for a minute try not to play with it too much because that will put it out of whack all right so what you do is you unspin where your um, hand dye or whoever it is that's wound your yarn up the way they have grab one side pop it there I'm going to grab it and pop it on the other side but I'm finding it hard to reach so I'm going to move my little V in a bit still too hard 
Let's move this one because I can't move that one anymore. It's going to knock the table. And I pop it over like that. And what you really need to do, maybe not make it too tight. You don't want it too loose. It'll just flop down. But you want it tight enough so that you can work with. Try and keep it all straight or as straight as you can. Don't cut the little threads that they have here yet until you're ready to start winding because you want to make sure it's all perfectly straight. It'll make it a lot easier to wind, all right? So once you've done that, you need to grab your scissors, find the part where I can see it right here. There's a little thread there, but you need to be careful because you might accidentally cut into the piece. So I can see that, What you may not even need the scissors, I can see that into a little there knot. So all I'm gonna do is pull that knot like that, and they've made it so easy for me to take that undone. So take it undone. And both of these threads will be the start and the end, should be the start and the end of your skein. All right, so one is the start and one is the end. You need to find out which one is facing the front here and that's the one you wind up. If you wind up from the middle, uh, you can do that as well, but it kind of gets a little caught. So I found it's this one here that's kind of on top of the skein that we just put together, yeah? So all you're going to do is just make a few little spins around, just take it off, one little strip off. Oh, I forgot to take the label off. Hello, <laughs> good on you, me. I took the scissors out to take the label off and I forgot. Now, if you don't want to cut your labels because you want to keep them uh, to give to your uh, client or whatever it is that you're using your labels for, then you don't need to. I'm just going to wind a little bit like that, fold it over just a little bit just to get me started and again fold it over. All right, just do that for a little bit. I'm going to pop this on fast for you. All right, so once you get to a certain point in your little tiny ball <laughs> you can start actually winding your work all right you may find a little bit might be caught under just like that right now I had a little bit caught under have a funny feeling this camera's crooked but it doesn't matter as long as you can see what I'm doing yeah all right so now once you get to that level you actually just go around like so you keep winding and you go around it can be a little bit tiring on you and may if you've got a sore back don't start from this area start from in front yeah so I find that a lot easier I'm only doing it from this side because I want you to see it normally if you stand in here you're standing upright and you can just go like that right and so I'm sort of leaning over the middle <laughs> of the chairs don't do it this way all right do it where you're standing in there yeah so just keep going oh, I dropped it as you do <laughs> just keep going all the way around, all the way around. And I'm gonna pop this on fast and then probably cut the video down because I know it'll be going forever. All right, so off we go and good luck winding your ball. was really tiring guys <laughs> oh gosh now as you can see we're nearing the end so it might move around a bit just straighten it up a little bit and if you want you can tighten it a bit there you go and that'll stop it from collapsing on you um, but if you have a swift uh, that would be so <laughs> much easier um, and what's a swift I hear you ask well it kind of sits like that and it spins your hanks around and your swift We'll spin it around onto the yarn winder, which we're going to go and use in a minute. Um, I'm not going to wind this blue one up because I actually found a knot in the middle of this one. So what will happen is now it's all going to collapse. And there's another knot right there that I just created myself. I'll leave it like that. Um, and that will get caught in my yarn winder because it has one knot. It was kind of really center as well. So I'm going to use another color to wind on our yarn winder. So let's head over to our yarn winder and turn our ball of yarn into a cake of yarn. Alrighty guys, once you've got your hank into a ball like so, um, I'm using the yellow for this uh, winding. 
you need to pop this either in a yarn bowl if you have one or I use one of these <laughs> a really old kitchen plastic tub now the reason I use it, it's kind of a little bit worn out in there I don't know whether someone used it in the microwave or in the dishwasher I don't know so it's kind of a little bit worn out so what I do is I just pop my little ball right in there like so super easy then I literally thread my yarn winder first I make a knot but I thread it first before I do the knot because once you put the knot sometimes if the yarn is thick it doesn't always go through the threader <laughs> so I just make a few knots so I don't know you just wrap the yarn around your finger spin it a little bit pull it through I don't know if you can see that wrap it around your finger spin it a little bit and just pull it through wrap spin and pull through and I've got like a gazillion knots there <laughs> I've made a mess hey I've made a mess there you go that's that's huge that's not coming undone <laughs> right so what you do is you on your uh, yarn winder I don't know if you can see that there are two little slits one's uh, a wider one and one's a smaller one the smaller one is where you pop your knot and give it a tug to make sure that knot won't come undone yeah and what I do is I actually hold the thread but not here I kind of hold it so you can see what I do I kind of hold it there between my fingers yeah like that so when the yarn's winding it's going like that it's going through my fingers so if you don't hold your thread what will happen is it goes on really loose so I'll start off with it here like so and I'm winding as we go and then I grab that bowl like I showed you before and hold it there like that easy 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 check it out I'm gonna pop this on really really fast for you so all you have to see is the end <laughs> all righty guys towards the end of your it's very noisy here guys I'm gonna slow it down but it's very noisy towards the end of your skein you might find that it does pull a little bit and in the middle of that uh, winding it actually did get caught and I actually had to tighten up the yarn winder because it doesn't usually sit on this table <laughs> it usually sits somewhere else but I bought it in here so that we can wind up today I'm gonna pop this I was gonna say on silent for you again but look at that that's all we have left so just spread it out I'm gonna let it drop and there you go finished once you're done you take out that little knot just lift it up pull the whole thing out and what you've got is a little center pull so it makes your work a lot easier to work with and hello I can see through it <laughs> <laughs> but it also um, helps with tension all right then you've got this little thread here you don't want that hanging down hanging around so what you do is you grab a hook preferably a, a lot smaller you pop it in your yarn like so grab that little thread I don't know if you can see that grab the little thread and just pull it through so it doesn't come undone I would say you'd be better off using a a smaller hook for that I hope you saw that but that's pretty much it for winding of yarn guys good luck creating your gorgeous pretty as a peacock blanket yay part one is finally done and ciao for now